Hi everyone and welcome to our lecture on 90s fashion. So lots of things to look at in terms of what's trendy. So I start off with just um, the events that are happening in the 90s and you can read up on this. The Persian Gulf War, so there were military, political things that were going on, Operation Desert Storm, so a lot with the Middle East, um, we did have issues and going kind of back and forth with, you know, we had a surplus and then we had, uh, we ended up going into a deficit. Uh, we did have the Don't Ask, Don't Tell, Defense of Marriage Act, uh, decrease in welfare programs, and then we kind of went back up on those. In terms of fads, so this is where we start seeing a lot of fads. It's not new. It's... We've had fads before, like those puffy jackets, longer jackets in the 70s. But as you can see, it became the puffer vest that in, in the 80s, they modified it, chopped it off, made it shorter, sleeveless, and it worked. But we did see a lot of, from, from that point on, a lot of fads. So short-lived trends, right? A classic indoors, a, a fad is a short-lived trend. Things like these line dances, like the Macarena, the cha-cha slide. We had the WWJD was What Would Jesus Do? Uh, Oprah's Book Club was huge. was actually really, it was a fad, but it was popular for a little bit. Pokemon, and it had a resurgence, but Pokemon came like with a really strong force in the 90s. Still don't know what that's about. I don't get it. Are those animals? Are they aliens? Where are the parents? I don't understand how there's always a tournament and there's never like push pops, things like things to eat, like push pops were trendy, the little, the typo, you know, fitness craze we always had. Like right now it's Zumba and spin classes, but back then typo was like the thing. You had all these things that were, you know, trendy, uh, but for a very short period of time. So they kind of come and they go. Chat rooms, because we start seeing that infusion, infusion of technology. The Furby, oh my gosh, the Furby. That was crazy for like a little bit and then it was gone. So what we started noticing in the 90s, and it, it, it came in the 80s, but it really started harnessing in the 90s, which is what's hot and what's not. So if it's in the youth and everyone's in it, if it's not, it's like, nope, it's totally rejected. Really, we're using what you wore to make a statement on what was happening in pop culture or like a current event. We do refer the 90s to the decade of anti-fashion because, and it's not new to kind of rebel against the previous decade. I mean, we've gone through example after example, but the 90s really were, were rejecting the 80s. In fact, that, that's so 80s. That became a statement in the 90s, actually. So all that color, all that bold color, gone. Definitely more simplistic, more minimalistic. We, we started rejecting we started rejecting logos because logos were so big in the 80s and it was rejected in the 90s. So it was not cool to have a logo planted across your chest or, you know, make it, making it obvious. It was very subdued. So colors, patterns, everything was more casual, more simple, more neutral in color. The industry, man, it got so tough because because of all the debt that was accrued in the 80s, so companies have been struggling and those merged, so those companies that were big already got bigger, they've been acquiring and it's all these little companies that are owned now by a big parent company. The trendsetters were the Gen Xers, so the gener Ge Generation X were the, so they were the trendsetters, so that was the youth, those were the teenagers. Styles did transfer over from the 80s, like the preppy. And the 80s started the grunge, but it really culminated in the 90s. That's where the grunge look really kind of manifested in the masses in the 90s. So the grunge look, preppy, goth really kind of took over uh, as well for the youth, uh, those that want to rebel. And popular, and everything was like very simple. So like, I call it the gap, <laughs> you know, decade. So like Abercrombie and Fitch, J. Crew, which just filed for Chapter 11, they just announced it, American Eagle and Gap, those were the popular retail stores. So those are the ones that were popular at this time. Sports were really big. Um, if you look at any reruns or you follow sports, I mean, I remember, oh my gosh, basketball. Um, just, I still remember in the 90s, just watching a basketball game and jumping up and down and like, oh my gosh, it was just like edge of your seat. So it was really cool to witness if you were in basketball, um, but soccer, uh, cycling, uh, you had Armstrong with cycling, Gretzky with hockey, uh, Bonds with baseball. And some, oh, Sampras, uh, tennis. Tennis got really popular. Um, Ali for boxing, um, Irvin for uh, 
football, but I just, you know, Agassi for, for tennis as well. But yeah, Michael Jordan, you had uh, Shaq, Kobe. Yeah, I can't believe I have him saying the late Kobe Bryant. These were really popular. I put Sir Charles, Charles Barkley. There's some popu popular movies. The reason I mentioned also, let me go back, um, for sports is because wearing jerseys were just really, were really popular. So everything was simple, but then people would wear like, you know, jerseys for, for their um, popular movies for the 90s uh, that were really trendsetters. Matrix was really big, you know, wearing the kind of gothy and almost fetishy um, fake leather or actual leather in the trench coat and all the buckles. Uh, but the one that I put in larger font, if you notice, was Clueless because that was so influential. Even today, you'll see the plaid, the jacket with the cute little pleated mini skirt, and go, oh my gosh, that's Clueless. Inspired, not just affected trends, fashion trends, but also how we spoke. That's so Baldwin, as if, loser, all these things came from that movie. So I put that in, in larger print because that is was so influential. And it still is. And it's referenced time and time again and uh, from, again, vocabulary, accessories, like the pens with the furry tops, that came from Clueless. So anytime we see this, we're like, whoop, that, that's from Clueless. And The Matrix was super uh, influential as well. So uh, wearing all black, monochromatic, and wearing like the buckles and the harness, um, harnesses. Television also had really popular uh, influential TV shows paying attention to the actual ratings because we started noticing this and this was new this started in the 90s where we started seeing cartoons with adult humor so it's cartoon it's cartoons but it's not for children like the Simpsons it's geared towards um, geared towards adults so we started paying attention to tell you know ratings and parental controls all that kind of came up in the 90s we didn't have that before so again the Simpsons which started from the Tracy Ullman show as a little short and became its series. It's still running, which I still can't believe. And shows that were part Seinfeld, Beavis and Butthead, Frasier, Friends was super influential on hairstyles, accessories and uh, clothing. Uh, there was Seventh Heaven, King of the Hill, South Park, SpongeBob, Futurama. Those were in terms of overall trends, fashion for women. So in terms of formal, long, the long black dress. You know how we have the little black dress? The long black dress was popular in the 90s. Earthy neutral tones, business suits, because again, going, you know, starting in the 80s, really focusing on corporate jobs. Oversized sweaters, the casual movement really took over, and it's oversized sweaters, stirrup jeans, denim, denim, denim is still popular. Lace blouses, flare jeans came back a little bit, turtlenecks and wedge shoes were really um, commonplace. In terms of hairstyle, the Rachel, we know that, the layered shag cut, oh my goodness, we call it the Rachel because of Jennifer Aniston in Friends. And the pixie cut, straight and smooth, was really popular back then as well. And then fashion for men, the business casual that I told you, so formal, it was actually considered passe to wear the suit. So that's how it, it culminated into the complete opposite of, of dressing up it's it's all casual so you you know you could wear the sweater and a button-up shirt but you don't wear the suit um, so smart casual um, so the epitome of casual right into the workplace and flannel khaki slacks is as formal as it's gonna get for a lot of people converse black leather jackets were really popular in the 90s uh, graphic print t-shirts so the t-shirts with actual prints were really big overalls were also worn a lot even in sync yep that is Justin Timberlake with his denim overall uh, hairstyles I can't believe I'm gonna say this but the bowl cut was actually on trend spiky hair the surfer hair the long hair the flat top was also popular for men so all these as you can see and last thing that I'm going to mention on this first part of the lecture is technology. So you're used to it, but you have to understand not everyone was surrounded by the technology like you are now. So what was new back then? Cell phones and the internet. And that was huge boom for the economy. Huge. It changed everything. It has changed how businesses work. I mean, right now we're losing most of the department stores because they didn't quite understand that. You have to understand we're in 2020. This was in the 90s. The department store didn't understand how to adapt, and decades and decades passed, and now there are they're they're crumbling. They're um, filing for bankruptcy because they didn't quite. But you have to understand, this is not new. This started in the '90s. They should have adapted. Uh, I'm not saying overnight, but uh, can't say well we didn't see this happening. It's been decades. How we communicate uh, in the '90s, cell phones. Now they're not 
the smartphones, they're cell phones, they're not smartphones, okay? <laughs> you can't do everything you can with your phone now, you can do that back then, but cell phones, email, text messages, we did have beepers and pagers, um, gone beepers, you'd get beeped, paged, and so that was in, and then we switched off to the cell phone. So instant, the idea of instant communication, you know, uh, was popular. It's interesting how we switched from the pager to the phone, because then people were like, look, I finally got my pager, and then the phone came, and it was like, yep, that's old. Let's ditch the pager. But all about instant communication, you know, email, which was new. Uh, information technology, so quicker deliveries, uh, more information, and it really did help impact international workings from company to company, so globalization. So what happened is with all this instant communication and technology, it actually, one, allows you to connect with people all over the world, and you can sell and actually do business with people all over the world, and that really did facilitate production all over the world because you were able to use technology and bring that technology overseas, produce your garments at a much cheaper cost, and then bring them in. So that's why I put that Made in China label because it really did significantly change the relationship with China when it comes to trade. Now it's definitely in, in the hot seat right now, but this is where it grew. And it was huge uh, because of, of the, the rise in technology. All right, so this concludes part one. We will continue on uh, with part two on 90s um, fashion and lifestyle. So thanks for listening.